plastics. They're in the clothes we wear, the food we eat, and the air we breathe. Every single piece of plastic ever made is still on the planet and will be on the planet long after our children's children's children. On land, in the sea, in us. I mean, we can't just focus on our ocean and the beaches. I also care about the children, families that live in disadvantaged communities that have often been ignored. And that's not going to happen under my watch. More than 450 million metric tons of plastic are produced every year. That's the combined weight of every person on the planet. Plastics are everywhere from beauty to agriculture and food. Nearly half is destined for single-use products. Plastics designed to be used once and then thrown away. In the name of ease, we created this almost throwaway culture. And maybe it's easier in the moment, but it's actually creating this really long-term problem that we need to solve. Most of the material we are putting in our recycle bins is just taking a stop at our recycling centers and finding its way to the landfills anyway. Most of the material we think is recyclable isn't actually recyclable, even when it has those chasing arrows that we love to see. It's hard to change the status quo, and there's a lot of people who are making money off of the status quo, and those folks fight hard to maintain it. The burden to recycle has fallen on consumers. You know, it was designed that way to make us as individuals think if there is a plastic crisis, it's because of you. The amount of plastic we are creating and that is getting into our environment is increasing exponentially every year. Plastic consumption is contributing to a warming planet and we're only recycling 9%. The issue had to be confronted now. The technology's there, but industry needs that push from government and from the community to force them to do the right thing. Environmentalists qualified a measure on the ballot that proposed a solution. We had to pick just the right folks who we knew we could trust to help us get this policy right. The industry folks that had been fighting us in the past knew that this thing was popular. They also knew that they could probably beat the ballot measure if they spent $100 million pummeling the measure with ads. The plastics industry knew a fight was coming. So for the first time, they sat down to negotiate. The ballot measure was the action forcing event that put all stakeholders in the room to come up with a compromise. We had environmentalists, waste haulers, we had local governments, and we had industry. All these different groups sitting down around the table together, discussing, negotiating. So there was a lot of passion in the room, which was great, and made for some challenging conversations sometimes. Early mornings, late nights, coming back with more questions and clarifying, building cohesion, trust, and respect for one another, regardless of kind of the hats that we wore at the table. These are people that have, in some cases, negotiated against each other, fought each other, made each other furious over other pieces of legislation. We engaged in very intense stakeholder negotiations for months. It was striking to look around the table and notice most of the leaders were women. I think the result we have is in large part driven by what women bring to the table. There is something right in bringing in more diverse voices to get really sticky conservation challenges is unstuck. This bill includes ambitious environmental mandates that will ensure that California is at the forefront of tackling the packaging and plastic waste challenges that we have. The final days leading up to bill passage were a roller coaster. Oh, I'm sure everything that could have gone wrong did, honestly. If we weren't able to do this, we needed to then spend the next five months running a ballot campaign. These things die nine times before they happen, uh, and that's just the nature of complex negotiations. Then came June 30th, 2022. Governor Gavin Newsom signed the bill into law. It requires all covered material to be recyclable or compostable within 10 years. It also requires producers to reduce the amount of plastic covered material that's coming onto the market by 25% within a decade. I think of the bill as three big buckets. The first is a source reduction component we were able to secure. The second is dealing with how we actually manage and recycle the plastics that we do need. So that's the extended producer responsibility component of the bill. And the last and incredibly important part is the funding component. So $5 billion over 10 years to help clean up and remediate California's environment. We are very proud of what we accomplished with SB 54. If you think about it, walking down the grocery aisle, SB 54 will have an impact on everything you see. When you're standing in your kitchen and you take food out of a package and you're thinking, 
Do I put this in the recycle bin? Do I put this in the garbage? SB 54 will answer that question for you, and the answer will always be it is recyclable. But this isn't the end of the story. As the plastic pollution crisis continues to grow, so will our efforts to combat it. The next frontier is microplastics. Unfortunately, there are myriad other ways that plastic is invading our bodies and our environment, and we're going to need to stay at it. Plastics cause harm to people, plastics cause harm to environments, and plastics cause harm to wildlife. And we have to make sure that we are avoiding any undue injustice to those three tenants moving forward. A future worth living is a future worth fighting for. Our first victory will not be our last fight.